Access opening is the first step of root canal treatment and it decides the roadmap to the success. In this video, I'll try to give you some clinical points to make access opening little easy which will help you during your clinical practice. First is jerk mirrors. Tools are important for any work and you can't deny their crucial role in achieving better outcome. These mouth mirrors give you better vision during excess cavity, use them and feel the difference. Then coming to endontic probe, for example DC16. It's a great tool to access narrow canals and especially when calcifications present in chamber and canals are not readily visible. Kindly note that whenever you encounter calcifications in pulp chamber, don't jump to ultrasonics to remove them. First try with DG16 to locate canals. It sticks in narrow canal orifices and guide the clinician. Ultrasonic tips can make various ditches in chamber and then it will be difficult to locate canals with DG16. DG16 also helps in finding canals when its orifice is lost in carious portion. Tap the probe in area where canal orifice location is expected and look for a catch. Once you find the catch, mark the location and direction. First step of access opening should be removal of caries portion. Sometimes clinician does a mistake to access the canals first before removing caries. Caries removal improves the visibility of pulp chamber as pulpal floor is little darker and it becomes easy to distinguish against the clear dentine rather than dark brown caries. Many clinicians advocate to do pre-endo buildups as it has many benefits like easy to isolate the tooth, better seal in between appointments and it provides stable reference points for working length and many more. But I suggest to avoid pre-endo buildups in difficult cases of calcifications when it is not easy to find canals. Once you find all the canals then build up can be done. That missing wall will improve light in excess cavity. To improve the illumination in chamber one more thing can be done. Use your mouth mirror to reflect the light in pulp chamber and look directly in the excess cavity. Slight occlusal reduction also improves visibility and provides stable reference point. When there is extensive or subgingival caries present and canals fall in carious portion position of canal usually changes. This is because in that case canal is not present at CEJ level. So canals usually flare going apically and this changes the orifice location. For example if caries present distally in maxillary molar and it is going subgingivally you will find distobuccal canal more distally than expected. Sometimes there is no dentinal map to guide the clinician and this poses another problem. For example, in mandibular molars, you find one of the mesial canal but you don't know it is mesiobuccal or mesiolingual. Then it's in which direction you should search another canal is a challenge. Tooth angulation also increases more confusion. In such situations, don't hurry to cut dentine. First take a radiograph with file in the canal. Take x-ray with different angulations and use slope rule to find out the canal. It happens mainly in second molar where both the mesial canals are close to each other. Principle of symmetry and running probe on boundaries of pulp chamber helps a bit but somehow if you are not sure, don't cut dentin blindly. First prepare the canals you already found then try to find the remaining canal. This will make you more familiar to the anatomy as you are working on the tooth for a while and continuous sodium hypochlorite irrigation cleans the chamber and chances of finding the canal improves. Distobuccal canal in maxillary second molar also imposes problem in locating it. The reason is size of pulp chamber is small and as compared to first molar. Another important point is location of orifice. Distobuccal canal is located slightly palatal and sometimes in line between mesiobuccal and palatal canals. Now what to do when there is profuse bleeding from excess cavity and it hinders the vision in locating canals. This is because of severely inflamed pulp. Take a sharp spoon excavator or you can say endodontic spoon. Try to remove coronal pulp as much as possible then irrigate with sodium hypochlorite and give pressure pack. 
for pressure pack you can use hydrogen peroxide soaked cotton if it is still bleeding then try to locate the canal and do orifice shaping in that this will remove pulp from littered canal and will help in controlling bleeding don't put brooches blindly visualize and prepare excess cavity doing anything blindly is not a good idea one more tip i want to give you while doing excess opening in calcified chambers in anterior teeth canal is placed more lingually or parietally as compared to usual position just below the cingulum last but not the least it is always better to assess the preoperative radiograph before excess opening you can measure the depth of pulp chamber and mark the same on the burr to avoid perforation because it is not necessary to have a burr drop always and once you enter the pulp chamber always use safe end burrs to enlarge the excess cavity to avoid focal perforations thank you